Welcome. My name is Robert Everin. I'm Consulting Curator for European Art at the Norton Museum of Art. And welcome to Intermezzi, a set of short clips about works in the collection, uh, specifically the old masters. Today's work, which I shall title An Intimate Continuous Narrative by Lucas Cranach the Elder, has to do with a painting titled The Betrayal and Capture of Christ from 1515. It's oil on wood panel and was a purchase in 1957 through the Norton Trust. The Passion of Christ refers to the more than a dozen events that mark the last part of Christ's life. Two of the most closely related are the Agony in the Garden, which follows the Last Supper, and the subsequent Betrayal and Taking of Christ, both of which are shown by Cranach in this remarkable night scene executed in oil on panel. These events are presented through the device of what art historians call a continuous narrative, a method of storytelling, where two or more episodes from a story are shown within a single frame. In the upper left corner of the picture, we see Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane, a pleasant place at the foot of the Mount of Olives, where Christ and his disciples often went. Christ is shown prostrated, pleading with God to spare him from death, while above him several of his disciples sleep peacefully. God replies by sending Christ an angel, shown here in an oval of light, bearing a cross, an admonition to be strong and to accept his fate. In the more powerfully lit foreground, we see the next set of events, Judas Iscariot singling out Christ with a kiss, identifying him for the Roman soldiers who rush in to arrest him. This part of the painting is all barely contained violence and movement. The whole mountain, whose slope we sense in the general tilt of the composition, comes alive with the small pinpoints and bright strings of light of soldiers' torches as they wind their way towards the foreground. Cranach has even included the story of the servant Malchus, who is sent out by the high priest Caiaphas to act as his ear, and ends by having his ear severed by an angry apostle, Simon Peter, shown sheathing his sword at the left. It is also an opportunity to depict Christ's last miracle, in which Cranach has imagined Jesus picking up the ear which he holds in his right hand and is about to restore to the crying Malchus. Interestingly, Malchus is shown as an African, and therefore likely a slave, a nuance that reinforces the Christian theme of compassion for those at the bottom of the social order. During the Renaissance, themes like those depicted in Cranach's painting often took place in a sort of half-light, or against a flat and undifferentiated dark background. Not so with Cranach, whose night is no mere backdrop, but a deep, enveloping, inky black that pervades the image and makes everything sparkle, from the nimbuses of Christ and his disciples to brightly flaring torches. Yet, like a miniaturist, he renders the most minute particulars one imagines with brushes of just a few thin hairs. The pervading dark also sets off the jewel-like colors of garments, while a multitude of spotlights move the eye restlessly around the picture. In one of the most remarkable passages, Cranach produces a virtual geometric fantasia in the rendering of the armor of the soldier at the right. But all this beauty is to a purpose, to make the image more compelling and more poignant, visually irresistible and deeply tragic all at once. It also performs a small miracle, which is to convey all this detail and action in a relatively small image. For all its bigness of conception, the actual size of the panel is very modest, we may infer, in fact, from the scale, that this picture was likely intended to be contemplated by only one person at a time and without distractions that would take away from the viewer's absorption in the subject. So much is yielded up for study that one takes leave of the picture slowly and with considerable reluctance. Cranach's life was long, productive, and remarkable. A lifelong friend of the rebel Martin Luther, who also lived in Wittenberg, and court painter to the Protestant electors of Saxony, he nonetheless also executed commissions for Luther's enemy, the Cardinal Albrecht of Brandenburg, Bishop of Mainz. A gifted printmaker, he supplied illustrations for Luther's German Bible, 
but also made time to execute a large number of saucy nudes for private collectors. Although he emerged from a predominantly Flemish tradition, he forged a radically individual style that made him one of the greatest German Renaissance painters, along with Albrecht Dürer, Matthias Grunwald, and Albrecht Altdorfer. His workshop, one of the largest in Renaissance Germany, was inherited by his son, also a painter. A measure of the steam he enjoyed came when in 1508, he received the honor, unusual for an artist, of being ennobled, which is how his own coat of arms came to be, a winged serpent with a crown and a ring in its mouth, with which he has signed the work in the lower left, one imagines with considerable pride. Thank you very much for joining us for the second intermezzo of our series.